So what we'll do is we'll do our best to get this centered up with the receiver legs and then we're going to trial fit it in here. Okay. So what I have now here is an angle finder and I can look at the reference mark and see that it's pretty close to zero. And what I can do is make sure that I have this adjustment screw screwed in all the way as much as possible. And then I can put my angle finder here. Okay. And compare the two. And then make adjustments as necessary. So here you can see I've got I've got zero there. And I've got roughly zero here. Okay, so this should be pretty close into alignment. So from this point, it looks like all we have to do is get this operating rod guide pushed back to the right spot. And so you'll just have to tap gently with your slide hammer or with your with whatever it is that you're going to use. So that might be about the right spot, maybe not, we'll have to see. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide we're going to slide the action into the stock and we're going to look through this hole and see if the operating rod guide is in alignment when we put it in there. So as you can see right here, okay, if you look down in that hole, look down in that hole you can see I just got a little bit farther to go. So we're just going to tap it on just a little bit. So wouldn't you know it, this bar actually fits with the stock in place. So now I can make some fine adjustments and then check my alignment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep tapping on, I'm going to keep tapping on this bar and I'm just going to look through this hole and when I can visually see that the holes lined up then we're, we're good to go. Okay, so here it is. Now I'm actually able to almost stick the wrench in. We're getting just a little bit closer. I'm not quite able to stick my Allen wrench in there just yet, okay? And uh, looks like I just have a tiny, tiny bit to go. Okay, so now we're we're just about there. I say I might just have just a little bit. I can get the wrench in, but I can tell it's not really going in perfectly straight. And that looks about right. Now I can, I can wiggle it back and forth. So now you can see I can stick that Allen head in there, or that Allen wrench, and it will slide in the screw. And now I can adjust it. Um, I already had it all the way in there, um, but now what I'm going to show you is the rotational alignment. Okay, so according to the instructions, you're supposed to get a set of feeler gauges, okay? And uh, you're supposed to get a set of feeler gauges and check the gap between the vertical surfaces um, on the left and right side of the Black Feather operating rod guide. Now, I think what I ended up doing when I hammered this on with the stock in place, with the whole action in place, I think if there was a rotational error, by having this in place when I did that, I think it centered itself. Because right now, I have good alignment uh, on both sides, and there's absolutely no gap anywhere 
that I can put a feeler gauge. Now if this is crooked, if it's so tight and it's crooked and you jam it down in there, naturally this stock is going to widen up a little bit and you will have a gap. And so the goal is if there's a gap on one side and not another, you need to rotate this around and get it into alignment. But as it stands, um, I'll try to get a good image, there is no, absolutely um, no gap to be seen on either the left side. There's absolutely no gap there. And there's absolutely no gap there. And it seems to be in pretty good alignment uh, the way that I did it. And again, if there was some kind of an alignment issue, um, you would stick a feeler gauge in there, right? And try to, uh, you, you would stick a feeler gauge in there and try to see where the misalignment is. Okay, but as it stands, uh, this particular one, there, there is none. So that being said, that's the hardest part and it's over. Now comes on to properly setting up the draw on the Black Feather Operating Rod Guide. Now, through their testing, they found that a pretty good starting point um, is to screw in. Uh, in their testing, they found out that a good setting was to screw this set screw out until it just stops, okay? Now, right there, we have um, perfect contact inside the stock from that set screw and the steel insert inside the stock. Now, their optimal setting is what they call uh, a two-sixth draw. So in other words, you turn your Allen wrench two flats, okay? So I have one flat here, so I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna tighten it one, and then one more, and that should be my optimal draw setting for this stock. So now, when I put this screw on, okay, and I tighten it down, it's gonna draw it's going to it's going to um, what's going to do is it's going to pull the barrel down into the stock and it's it's going to give you some draw pressure there so even though we're getting rid of draw pressure here um, that's what the term they're using is is um, a slight draw on the front end so from this point you can put your set screws in and put a little bit of blue lock tight on each of the three set screws and just barely I would honestly just barely screw them down enough to make contact. I'm just gonna drop a little bit of blue Loctite in the threads there. So using a 3.30 seconds Allen bit or an Allen wrench just go ahead and thread that in there and I just I'm re really just barely gonna snug it down and let the blue Loctite take care of the rest. And what'll happen is the blue Loctite should flow uh, inside and around the barrel as well a little bit, giving it some, some additional security. But honestly, I don't think you really need that much. Uh, the, the snugness of this, it, it really, I really don't see the need for Loctite on this particular portion of the rifle. Okay, one small thing I forgot to mention is when you take this action out of the stock for the first time, you immediately want to put some Loctite in these draw uh, set holes. And insert the set, the set screws with a 332 Allen wrench. and go ahead and lock down that screw. That is a very important thing and that will make sure that'll make sure that your black feather operating rod guide adjustment screw stays in place, which is the this is the heart of the whole stock. This is how everything um, is that this is what makes this stock a very good and accurate stock is that aspect and to make sure that that screw or that insert doesn't move, you need to go ahead and 
apply your blue Loctite. So now that that's secure, you can continue on with your Scout Heart hand guarding installation. So now that we have the hardest part done, the next step, if you happen to have the Black Feather Scout handguard, okay, is to go ahead and install that. Uh, so you're going to have to take the action out. Now at this point, if you're going to install the Scout handguard, I also recommend you go ahead and put your gas cylinder back on. This way we can check for fore and aft alignment. Now installing the Scout handguard rail onto the black feather stock or onto a rifle that is installed in a black feather stock it's very very simple uh, it's a lot less complicated than putting it on a rifle that isn't in a black feather stock okay so the reason why is because you have these vertical surfaces right here and they align onto this portion of the black feather operating rod guide the whole thing is held in place by allen screws so there's a lot of blue loctite and you're going to need a 564 Allen bit or Allen wrench. So go ahead and remove, you have these countersunk screws here on the top that hold this bottom clamp on here. The rest of the bottom clamps are held, held on by, uh, by four button head standard Allen screws or hex head screws. And again, because there's no alignment, you really do just pop it on, make sure that you've got clearance in the front and the back and then clamp down on the barrel clamps. Now in removing this I forgot about something. There are long and short countersunk screws. So the side with the operating rod has the really short countersunk screws and the side that doesn't have the operating rod going through it has the long countersunk screws. So when you put this together, short over here, long over here. And there's actually a steel insert right here. On, so you have the clamp and then you have a steel insert uh, that accepts these longer screws. Okay, so now that we have all the clamps off, we're just going to go ahead and drop this Scout handguard right on the top. And again, you're going to look over here and make sure you have a gap. And it's got some play, so you can just kind of wiggle it a little bit. Not really wiggle it, but try to uh, give it some pressure and work it a little bit. So you can see over here, I've got uh, you, you know a good amount of, of gap on this side, and I've got some gap over here. Well, even though we've got the Scout handguard on, what I wanted to do was back up a moment and say now that you have your operating rod guide, your new operating rod guide on now, uh, and you have the tension screw set, and the set screw set, what you need to do is just really quickly verify by looking in the hole that on the bottom here that this tension screw isn't um, protruding through the hole here. Because um, if it is, then when you try sticking your operating rod in, it's going to bind up or scratch. Or, you know, you can look in there and you can, you can definitely tell um, if, uh, see if I can get a good, good angle here. But you can usually uh, tell pretty well, uh, pretty easily, if you're going to have obstruction in there. And if there is, then you're going to have to back it out, and you're going to be limited to how far you can put that screw in. But in my case, uh, it wasn't an issue. Okay. So as you're tightening up the scout handguard, again, you just want to kind of go in a alternating pattern as if you were uh, tightening up cylinder heads. Um, and just verify that everything is good and tight. So basically, you want to you want to hit uh, you want to go into a pattern that goes one side to another, and then front, then back. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then start over again. One. So you just want to go in a, in a kind of an alternating pattern, just to make sure that uh, as you torque down this clamp, that it's getting even 
torque all the way. And you'll find that as you tighten some screws down, the other ones will get looser. So you just keep going over and over and over again until they're completely tight and do the same thing with the bottom ones. So these have already been all tightened up. And you can see now that I have these nut plates here with Loctite. Um, they're all good to go. Okay. So now's the time that if you so desire, they, uh, the M14 Canada provides you with a really high quality stainless steel roll pin and if you want you can go ahead and, and try to hammer that in. Now in my case if I look straight through that hole, let's see if I can zoom in on it. So if I look straight through that hole you're going to see that uh, something doesn't line up. I think the position of this operating rod guide here is a little too far back for where that hole is drilled. So it's a pointless effort for me to try to put that in. Not to mention the fact that this is on there really, really solidly, really, really tightly, so it's not really necessary to put that roll pin in. Um, if you can fit it in and if everything lines up or if you have a drill bit that you want to run through there, um, have at it. If you haven't done so already uh, when you install this gas cylinder, uh, it's still a good idea to check your gas lock timing and see if it needs shims or not. Or if you had shims in there, make sure you put the same ones back in. And now that you have everything completely reassembled, uh, go ahead and tighten your gas plug to uh, 150 inch pounds is a good number. Now you can go ahead and put your flash presser back on. So now that we're here, we're going to go ahead and give your operating rod guide a proper application of lube. And while you're at it, go ahead and lube up the important points on the barrel for the operating rod. And also lube up your operating rod track. And while you're at it, just hit the rest of the receiver too. Hit the operating rod shelf, the bolt lug roller cutout, the left track, and also inside where your bolt's going to go. Hit the bottom of the bolt real quick, a little bit around the lugs. You don't want to get any lube inside the firing pin channel. Definitely on the, the tail of the bolt there. And over here on the circular upper portion there. Go ahead and slide your bolt in. Grease up the camming area of the operating rod. Don't forget the tab and pretty much anywhere where there's a wear mark. Okay. Go ahead and put the operating rod in. Bolt back over here where it needs to be. We'll snap it in place. Now what you'll notice here is somehow we got lucky and with the operating rod guide the way it is, my operating rod is I would say fairly centered with the gas cylinder so everything is happy. Right. And it would probably be a good time now to do a tilt test. Now that you've done your tilt test, go ahead and install your operating rod spring and guide. Make sure you give it a good lube of CLP or any other uh, kind of a, an oil would be okay in this position. Um, you don't have to go with grease. It's kind of either or and go ahead and uh, install your flush fit pin. And again, once it's fully seated, okay, make, make sure it's flush and that you can, that it's uh, not protruding out the side or, at all, or else it will gall up the inside of the black feather stock. While we're here, I want you to take note of these vertical surfaces here, okay? And during the installation, you want to make sure that that you didn't peen the corners or using a wrench that you didn't mar the sides up. Uh, it's a very precision fit. It's about one ten thousandth or one thousandth of an inch uh, clearance 
between the grooves on the, on the black feather stock and the walls or the edges of these uh, of this black feather operating rod guide. So again, just make sure that uh, both surfaces were undisturbed and preserved during your installation. Okay, so sometimes you might want to put a layer of tape on the front. And by the way, this is reversible, so it doesn't matter which way that it goes. It's symmetrical, and uh, you can't really mess up the installation uh, like you can with the other chassis system where it has to go on one certain direction. Okay, so now we're going to start talking about the stock here. And one of the inspection points that you need to pay attention to is the distance between this very top surface, okay, of the of the of the black feather stock, and the distance to this surface. Let me get a this surface right here of the bottom of the stock. Okay, so there's a specific distance that calls out uh, that it needs to be to be a safe stock or or at least a stock that will allow a safe functioning rifle and that distance is 1.693 inches to 1.703 inches okay so and it's kind of difficult to to measure but I'll try to and I'm gonna kind of eyeball it I can't really get uh, because of the the placement of the of the shelf here the top shelf of the stock I can't put the bottom uh, caliper jaw on this bottom surface and the top one on the top of this it just won't allow me to do it without angling it so I'm just gonna look straight down and kind of eyeball it and just try to get it as try to rock it back and get it as uh, squared up as possible so mine happens to be on the very bottom uh, bottom spec of or the minimum spec and I think that's really good for this stock um, to have it on the fat end of the spec uh, to, con to accommodate variances in receiver geometry, you can have a very unsafe condition. What that does, if this is too fat, this trigger group will angle down, and when the hammer comes back to cock, this, uh, the connector or the disconnector uh, will be sitting too low and what will happen is the hammer won't engage that hook and it will follow the bolt home when it cycles. So it's very important to do a um, hammer follow test. Now also, what you want to do when, when you put your rifle together, I want you to pay attention how this action or this trigger group sits in the stock okay uh, you don't want it angled down like this if it's angled down like that then there's some variances in your receiver geometry that is pulling the front end of the receiver too high up into the stock and it's tilting the back of the trigger housing down and what that's going to do is give you an unsafe hammer follow condition so be very very mindful of that now luckily I had three trigger groups and I had two trigger groups that I could not physically lock down um, into, into this action. And the third one managed to lock in just right. Probably because it might have been a little bit more worn than the other ones. Okay, so what I have here is I have a Springfield Army receiver on the bottom. And I have an LRB receiver here on the top. Now what I want you to pay attention to in specific are the D cuts uh, or what I call the D cuts in the receiver legs and you'll notice how this one here um, these D cuts the, it's you can see it tell where it was radius uh, quite quite nicely here but the follow-up cut to open it up to the back of the receiver leg uh, was a little narrow that or it was offset or something and you can see it how it swoops down and then back up and then back around to the leg and it's I think the reason that I had to go through these other trigger groups was because I believe that this surface is a little too high. Okay, I don't think that cut was good enough or high enough or low enough, sorry. So so this is sitting here too high and what it's trying to do is it's trying to pull um, the trigger group higher into the stock than it's supposed to. Okay, I didn't have that trouble with this particular receiver because you can see those cuts are much nicer and they, they're blended in quite quite a bit better than than the ones on my Springfield Armory. Okay, 
So if you run into a, a situation like that, what you want to do is you want to um, stone or file this surface of the trigger group. Okay. Okay, so what that does is as you engage your trigger latch, if you reduce the surface, you'll allow the gap between the trigger pads here and the bottom of the receiver um, to be the appropriate distance. So if you do, I would just stone it or use a, a very fine file. Work it just a little bit and then trial fit it and see if you can get your receiver to lock in, okay, or your trigger group to lock in to the stock, okay? And again, I think it's safer to um, file on the cheaper part, which is the trigger guard or the trigger guard latch, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, versus a $500 to $1,000 receiver or to try to loosen up the stock somehow by grinding metal on the contact points down here. Um, so I would not want to grind on a $600 or $700 stock um, or a $500 receiver. However, this component here is a lot cheaper and probably a little easier to find and uh, you can probably fix fix some things as well uh, maybe by painting it if it was too loose or something so anyway uh, enough about that okay so now if you do have a condition that when you lock in your receiver into the stock if the trigger guard takes very little effort to close um, if it's just if it snaps closed almost with no resistance you probably want to tighten things up or if the receiver if you can tell that it's kind of too loose and you can shift it around in the in the stock you want to tighten it up a little bit and so that what you what you do is um, they went ahead and sent this uh, this little sample piece of uh, I guess it's muffler heat barrier tape or something and so you just cut a strip and you can you can put a layer on this portion of the stock and what that'll do is that'll increase the gap okay and tighten and it'll it'll tighten up this trigger group okay so if you have one that's too loose shim it right here with some aluminum heat tape uh, if it's too tight uh, stone the d-cuts or stone the uh, the trigger the trigger guard latch where it mates to the receiver legs uh, one last thing again we've You've already seen the pains that I went through to reduce the size of the barrel boss where the operating rod guide goes so that this could actually slide on. Now, if you have another condition where the boss on the barrel is too small and you can rattle the black feather operating rod guide on this, then you need to knurl the barrel. So you're going to want to use uh, a hand knurler to, uh, to knurl that barrel. And if you want to know how to do that, just check out the video that I posted a couple of months ago about how to knurl a barrel and how to fix a loose operating rod guide. So I won't go over that now. You can just go ahead and look at my other video, and that'll tell you how to trial fit. So just, just made up that technique with the kind of fit that you need from this uh, operating rod guide. Okay, so now comes the time where we want to put the action in the stock. Everything's lubed up. You've done your tilt test. Um, you've checked all your screws. Everything is tight. Um, and you're just going to look for the made up the receiver legs to the slots in the, in the stock. slide it in gently and clamp down on it. So go ahead and insert your trigger group. Okay. Like I said, it's going to be a, a tight fit. The first time you do this, it may take uh, a bit of effort. Okay. Okay. So I went ahead and clamped that down. And again, what I wanted you to look at was look at your trigger group fit. So, so as you can see there, I have a pretty flush fitting trigger housing frame. Okay, uh, again, you don't want it overhanging there. We've got some good, really good lockup, and that's how you want it. Okay, so now that you have your trigger guard locked in, now you want to go ahead and put this screw in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and tighten that screw. 
what you're going to notice, if you look here, as I tighten that screw, this gap is going to close up. And it's pulling, it's, it's pulling the barrel down into the, the handguard of the stock. Okay. And there's no torque spec at the moment. If you want, you can put some blue Loctite if you think that it's going to shoot loose, or you could check it after every range trip. And again, if it starts to work loose, then go ahead and put some blue Loctite on there, so I won't do it anymore. Now that you have the stock together, you want to do a function check. And the biggest thing we're looking for is hammer follow, okay, to make sure that the hammer doesn't follow the bolt. Okay, so for that, you obviously make sure that there's nothing in the chamber. Uh, easy operating rod handle forward, and you want to pull the trigger hold it down and then while you hold it down you want to cycle the operating rod and when you let off the trigger your hammer you should hear a clunk and your hammer should not fall okay and now you pull the trigger again and the hammer should fall that concludes the function check for the installation of the black feather stock then one last word of note uh, that I want you to be aware of is when it comes time for you to take this apart make sure you undo that screw first okay because uh, that's going to relieve pressure on the trigger guard so always make sure you take that screw out first then unclamp it so one thing I also found is that now that you have this gap here and by the way there's no way to get rid of that gap that gap has to be there for the trigger guard to, un to, to unlatch so that you can get your trigger guard or your trigger group out. Now what I found out the best easiest way to get the trigger group out is to use your GI tool and slide it, obviously disengage your safety, is to slide it in here and grab it this way and of course after you remove this screw pull up on this use this as the handle or any other any other bar a wrench or something like that use that as your handle to get your to get your trigger group out. Thanks for watching. Good luck and I hope your results were as good as mine.